Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. And today we're going to be tackling the debugger in Game Maker Studio. Often overlooked, the debugger is your most powerful tool for figuring out what's going on in your game, reproducing bugs so you can fix them, and generally just knowing what's going on behind the scenes to make you a better programmer. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to watch and look at variables and instances, pausing and editing variables, buffers and textures and surfaces, and how to use the profiler. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now I've already got the debugger running and you can do so too by pressing this little bug icon or by pressing F6. For me, it opens up an entire new window on my second monitor, but for you, it might just cover over your other game. It's going to start running the game and open up a whole new view for us to explore. And for the most part, the game itself here is kind of unimportant because we want to know what's actually going on behind the scenes. And the debugger is what allows us to know all of that information. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the game so we can explore the debugger more in depth. Up top here on the left, we have the graph view. So this is showing us the average FPS of our game, the memory usage and the average of that. So this is really great if you're looking for a specific frame rate for your game. Now, most of the time, it's pretty easy to get at at least 60 frames per second, depending on what you're doing. But you can look here and get an idea of exactly where you're at. You can see here that the average FPS is around 2600. If we're aiming for 60 or 120, I think we're good here. But you can check this and watch it over time to see how it evolves. And you can scroll through it as well to see how it has changed over time. Then underneath that, we have the resource view. So this actually shows everything in your game kind of like the asset tree. We can look through here of all of the objects, but we can also go more in depth, such as going into the actual events for every object we have. If I click on the create event, it'll actually open this up in right here, but you can't change it because it's locked. So if you wanna make any changes to your code, you have to go back to your original game and any changes you make while the game is running isn't going to work. You can't make on the fly changes to your code except you can in the debugger, which I'm gonna show you how to do in just a little bit. Underneath this, we have the call stack. So if I pause the game by pressing this little break button, the call stack is gonna tell us exactly where we're at. And you can also see that this resource view takes us to exactly where we're at. So we're in the pickup parent in the step event, and we're actually on line one. Now, if we had multiple functions running, objects calling other functions, that call stack down here would tell us exactly where we're at and how deep this goes. So that's really helpful if you're trying to debug and you have an error inside of a specific function, you can check out this call stack to see how far that goes and how deep it is and where the error specifically lies. And then down here, depending on the tab you're on, we have a bunch of different information. So we have variables, which contains locals, globals, and watches. We've got instances, which has the instance, the all instances, and the selected instance. We have the others tab, which has the profile and buffers, and the graphics tabs, which has the render states and surfaces and textures. And we're gonna to be touching on all these quite a bit more in just a minute, but I wanna get through the rest of the overview first. And up here in the primary portion of the debugger is the code view, as you can see right here. So this allows us to see what code is running and we can control that actually line by line if we want to. Because right up here in the toolbar, we have playing, pausing, restarting, stopping, and then these tools over here, they allow you to move through your code. So this first one is to step into a function call. And that means if I press this or F11 for the shortcut key, it's actually gonna take us right down into this. And if we press this again, well, this if statement didn't evaluate to true, so it skips over completely and moves on to the next one. Now, what's really cool is we can actually hover over our code inside of here and see the values of our variables and the built-in variables as well. So this one allows us to go line by line. 
The next one, which is stepping over a function call, means that if you're going through your code and you want to just skip going into a function, such as one of these, if, it, if we had a custom function here, it would take us to that code so we could go it through line by line. It does not do that on functions for built in, like sine and degree to radian, which is what this is doing right here. So skipping over this kind of looks exactly the same, not a very big deal, but if you had your own function, you'd want to use step over it so you're not going into it. The last one here is to step out of a function. So if I wanna completely get out of this entire event, I can just click this right here and it's gonna move us to the next one. Now this is great if you're inside of something like, now I'm inside this for loop. If I wanted to get out of it, I can click that and it'll take me completely out of the for loop and moving on to the next event. So these are the three ways to move through your code. And then we have enable real-time debugging, which you should definitely check if it isn't already. This allows you to see the values of your variables and your objects while your game is running. And then we can also stop and kill the debugger and go back to the normal view inside of GameMaker. Now, what's the point of all of this? The debugger is really handy for when you just need to know what's going on and to fix errors. And the way you do that traditionally is by setting breakpoints in your code. So jumping back into our demo itself, we have a step event with a function called script process player. So if we knew this script was causing us issues, but we didn't quite know how, we can add a breakpoint. So you can select a line and press F9, or you can just click over here on the left to add your own or remove a breakpoint. And this breakpoint is then going to trigger in the debugger. So when we get to this code, the debugger is going to pause and then we can move through it line by line. So if we go back to here and I press play, boom, the debugger hit it almost instantly because of how fast code gets executed. But now we have this opportunity to look at every single value inside of here and make sure that it is what we expect it to be. Because sometimes things aren't the way they should be and you have to figure out why and what's going on. So what's really nice is this gives us the opportunity to do that. So now we can move through line by line, making sure this all works. And if it isn't, well, we can actually dig a little deeper by going to the variables tab. And this is gonna be for local variables over here. What that means is everything in our instance that's running, which right now we are in script process player being run by the player, so the player, if it has any local variables, are gonna show up right here. Now it doesn't, so let's go ahead and jump over to instances. And inside here, we can actually see all of the variables and data that we have here. And let's say we wanted to try changing one of these to see what would happen. What's really cool is you can change these on the fly. So we have something called X speed right here. Traditionally, we're moving at six pixels per second. But if I change this to 60, and then I take these breakpoints out and I press play, then when I move, I am now flying through this level because we can actually change the values of our variables inside the debugger itself. To go right along with that, maybe you want to watch a value as your game plays. In variables, we can go over to watch, and you can see I've already got one here. I'm watching O player dot y speed because if you want to watch a specific variable inside of an object you must reference it by that name and if we want to watch another one then we can press pause and we can come over here and we can add another one for x speed and you can see that it now has a value of 60. this works for watching local variables and global variables you just have to give them either the right prefix or the right spelling if you try to type something in here that just doesn't exist it's gonna tell you it's unable to evaluate. It's not gonna crash it or anything, but you're just not gonna get a value from it. So you can watch the data for any value in your game change over time, which is really, really cool. Over in instances, we have access to everything in our game that is running. So in all instances, we have every single object inside of here, and we can expand this to see all of the data, and we can go deeper and deeper into all of the data types as well. But if we wanna look at one specific instance and we're just having a hard time finding it, we can actually select an instance, 
by bringing up our game and we can just left click on something in the game and it shows up right here. And now let's talk about these others and graphics tabs. So in others, the first thing we have is profiling. So if your game is coming along pretty well, but you're encountering maybe some bottlenecks, some slowdowns, some dips in your game because it's not running as you expect, well, the profile is a really great tool to check out what might be causing that. So if we start the profiler and then we press play, we can actually watch everything in the game and see how much time and how much percentage of the game that is taking up. So if we just run it for a little while, that's fine. And we can click stop profiling. And now we have these values. So now we can look at where the code is being called in our game. So we've got the pickup parent, we've got the game, the player, and we can see the call count for everything inside of here. We can see the time it takes and we can see the step percentage for our game. So we can look at this in different ways and we can figure out what might be causing the game to slow down or use up more resources than you might expect. Perhaps you've got a for loop that's going longer than you expect or a resource that's actually taking a little more time to load or to get put on the screen than you might expect. The profiler allows you to find out all of that information in just a few seconds. The longer you let it run, the more accurate it's gonna be. Over on the right, we have buffers. And buffers are a kind of advanced concept, but essentially they allow you to read and write information in a mind-bogglingly fast way. This is really great when you're working with networking or you want to do saving and loading like checkpoints in your games. You can do these incredibly quick and the buffers allows you to see what you've got here and then you can check out everything inside of them. So if you're not familiar with buffers, that's okay. I'm not gonna go too in depth in this, but essentially if you've got some in your game, you can come down here and change how you're viewing them because there are different data types for those buffers. And then you can examine every single buffer individually. And if it's not what you expect it to be, then you've got something wrong in your code and now you know it and you can go change it. Lastly, we have the graphics tab. So we have render states over here, which I'm just gonna ignore. And we're gonna move on to the surfaces and textures. So if we pause our game and then we look at surfaces and textures, it's empty, but that's because we need to come down here and refresh this. And we can actually look and see the surfaces and textures that are running in our game at this exact second. So a texture is really everything in your game. You can see here that we've got three texture pages. So the first one is one by one. The second one has pretty much everything in our game. And the third one just has a few very large clouds and background assets. So these are what Game Maker actually pulls from to put the sprites into your game. Optimizing texture pages is something you can do once you're further along in your game and you're having some issues. Changing the sizes of those can make a big difference, but this is a great way to come in and see the texture pages that you've got and what's inside of them. And along with that, we can view the surfaces that we have by refreshing. And this right here is the surface of our game. Now, if you're not familiar with surfaces, the default surface in your game is where everything is drawn, but you can actually create more surfaces and draw more things on them. This is really great for a wide variety of things you might wanna do in your game, such as capturing an image from a surface, making a transition like you're pulling the screen apart. You can save effects to a surface and then save a lot of processing power by just drawing that full surface over your game. The possibilities are pretty much endless, but once you start using more, this is a great way to come in and see exactly what's on the screen, what's happening, and the size that it's taking up. Now, I know that was a lot to take in, but the debugger is a really powerful tool. Don't ignore it in your game developer journey because it's easy to just get into the habit of using a show debug message in your code to figure out what's going on, but there is so much more you can do with the debugger to become the best game developer out there. And that's what I've got for you. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And as I like to say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.